we don't think we're gonna have very long to fish today just because there's supposed to be a winter storm coming in here this afternoon so we're probably just gonna fish about an hour or so or a couple hours hopefully we can make it happen and catch a few fish oh Megs is down swing Megs oh yeah baby <laughs> oh double double guys double double what are these what are these <laughs> I saw Mags get bit and I swung up. I think they're co-hos. I think they're co-hos, guys. Oh, they're Joe Hortles. Come on, Mags. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that, dude. Look at that, little crawlers. Oh, that's that's groceries right there, baby. That's groceries right there, baby. <laughs> well, looks like a bobbity bob. A lot of nice eater size coals today, guys. Getting some great table fare groceries. Oh, there we go, guys. Get a little warm up. Why would you have to oh, fish on, guys? Hoo hoo. I got one too. Doubled up. <laughs> That was awesome. We threw out, I threw out, and then Kyle threw out right behind me. And within like 15 seconds, both our bobbers <laughs> went down. Good job, Meg. Nice fish. That's a little bit bigger. Nice job, Meg. Oh, what a nice jump. Oh. Steely Max. <laughs> yay, yay. Oh, beautiful. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, this is our first adult steel hunt today. I'm so excited. We tried up a couple different techniques, started floating down this rock wall, so we got down a little further than we were fishing before. And yeah, it's a beautiful fish. I'm so excited. Mag's hands are too cold. But this is her beautiful steely. I'm gonna get her, get him going back for her. Wow, is that cool? And there he goes. Oh, that was so awesome, Megs. <laughs> nice job, girl. Thanks. Proud of you. I got some really cold hands. <laughs> we gotta roast some, roast some hands, huh? Yeah. That just made me think of s'mores. I could go for a s'more. Yeah, wouldn't be too bad, would it? <laughs> a s'more and a hot chocolate right now. More hot chocolate or a coffee. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm gonna show you another trick here. Good way to catch these fish if you don't have spawn. What I have here is the deep diving junior thunder stick. I believe this is a vampire color. I know this is a vampire color in Rapala, but that red nose, black back, this is a great bait. So I just have about a two foot liter of 12 pound test mono. I'm just using a medium heavy, about a seven foot rod. Nothing fancy at all. You can use about anything. And we're just gonna cast this out and just a nice slow retrieve back in just so you can feel that crankbait just, just working, waddling down there. Just nice steady retrieve back in. We're gonna throw just straight across the current. You just wanna feel that bait just vibrating down there. Fish on guys, just like that. Brown trout on. Oh, and he came off. Just like that though, guys. Just like that. On a Rapala, that just goes to show you, you can use a whole variety of methods out here to catch these fish. Let's see if we can get another one here. Throw right up in there. It's a nice steady retrieve, just so you feel that bait just vibrating. Fish on guys, fish on. <laughs> it's every cast with the crankbait, baby. Oh, the Browns want the crankbait. <laughs> The Browns want the crankbait. Look at that, guys. 
just goes to show you, you can use a whole variety of methods to catch these fish. Browns love crankbaits. They love hot and tot, stick baits, all that stuff. Look at that football, guys. Look at that football. Just absolutely destroyed that bait. There's something hungry down there? No, I Really? I can actually feel it. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you were right, Megs. Oh, that was a big fish. Megs so called it. She said, Kyle, cash right where I just missed one. That was a bigger fish. And I just threw in there and had a heck of a head shake. Oh. Guys, you can tell how cold it is because their spawn bags are freezing out here. <laughs> that just means they'll. That just means the color lasts longer, though. Oh, that was definitely a fish. Oh, it's still on. <laughs> I was like, that was definitely a fish. Well, guys, we finally got him in. We were struggling to figure out what he was until he got in the boat, but he's just a really, really silver brown. So, pretty cool. That's my second brown of the day. There's a fish, good fish. <laughs> I had my hands in my pocket, my bobber's way down there. Oh, did you see that jump? Oh, I hope, I hope my GoPro got that. That thing just came rocketing out of the water. Oh, he oh, came off. No, that was such a pretty brown. That was about an 8 to 10 pound, just crawl pretty brown. Skyrocketed out, jumped like this high out, and just spit the hook at me. guys what we're doing today is we're fishing this discharge now the method we're using is float fish and spawn bags now this is a method you've seen us use a lot in rivers now if you want to see the full demonstration on how to set this rig up just hit this link in the description we're setting everything up the same way we would how we would fish a river and we're just fishing this current as it comes out of this discharge now this is a great way to fish discharges any sort of bubblers and harbors and marina that's a good one guys that's a good one. We moved down a little ways. Got out of all the little coho we were catching. We got, we caught uh, almost our limit of coho. And uh, now we're just trying to focus on catching some more steelies and browns. So, this is an awesome day out here though, guys. We were really surprised we could even get out here today. That's frozen, guys. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Another steely, guys. Very cool. It's another steely, guys. Getting a nice mixed bag today. We're gonna get him going right back here. He's just gonna take right. He flopped out of my hands, but he, he shot right off. Just getting a great mixed bag today. We're caught about our limit of coho released a ton of coho, released a whole bunch of browns, some nice steelhead, just an awesome day out here. We're gonna keep catching some fish. We got a big storm coming in here in a little bit, so we're gonna have to get rolling back, but what an epic day these fish are on the feed before this storm, guys. I got another 
around. And just a nice brown, guys. Not a monster, but he is pretty. On the bead bag combo. Guys, I'm so excited. This is my favorite fish I've caught today by far. He is so pretty. I don't know if you can see the blue on his cheek. It's like this really pretty iridescent blue color, but oh my gosh, he's so covered in spots. Just a really cool frog. I'm so excited. <laughs> fish, 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 fish. Fish on, guys. <laughs> Didn't look like a monster, but you know what? It's a fish. We got a little coal here. Oh, it's a little laker. No, I... You guys, I think this is a, look at these faint. There's really faint, I don't know if the camera picks it up orange spots is that a coaster look how fat that thing is i think it's a coaster there's like orange orange spots like a brookie almost i don't know if you can see that on the gopro guys look at that man i think it's a coaster guys wow that is so cool i've never caught one of those before but it's got to be because there's orange spots right here we're gonna get him right back that's awesome He's back, baby, that was so cool. <laughs> got back in and that was a wild day the weather was insane we got a big snowstorm coming in right now it was snowing the wind was howling but the fishing was amazing so we had a great day out there now we're headed to our Airbnb in Erie Pennsylvania and Maggie is gonna do an awesome catch and cook with these coho right now okay guys so we are back in the kitchen this week and I'm gonna show you guys a really really simple recipe with a lot of great flavors for this coho salmon that we just caught so the first and most important part of this recipe is to make sure that you guys are taking care of your fish. So right when you catch it, you wanna make sure you're bleeding it out, and then you wanna make sure as soon as you get to shore, fillet up your fish, rinse it off super well, and then bring it home, and when you get it home, rinse it off again. And we actually fillet it to cut out the pin bones. So in this clip here, you can see how we're cutting out the pin bones. We like to just run our knife along each side of the pin bones and just get that little tiny strip of bones out. And it makes it easier to cook and it makes it easier to eat as well. And we don't have to worry about getting any bones in the final meal. So this week we decided that we wanted to show you guys a way simpler recipe that doesn't have nearly as many ingredients and doesn't take nearly as much time. So you guys can actually whip up this recipe in about 30 minutes or less. It's super, super simple. All it is is just a salmon garlic parmesan pasta, but it's really, really delicious and all the ingredients that you need are right here. As you can see, there is, it's super, super simple. There's really not much to it and I'm gonna show you guys how to whip it up right now.
Well guys, we're just about to give this recipe the final test here. It looks absolutely amazing. We've had it, Maggie's made this for me a few times before and each time I've just really enjoyed it. She hit a home run again guys, this is absolutely amazing. All the flavors just blend so well together. They just complement the fish so much and the nice thing about this recipe here is you can really taste the fish, you know, you can really taste that fish. So guys, now we wanted to tell just a little bit about the story from our day of fishing that you just saw in this video. So it was actually quite an eventful trip, <laughs> to say the least. You know, leading up to this trip, we had booked this about two months prior, but we're, we've been so busy with our charter fishing business in Michigan, we just haven't had a chance to get away. So this was really the only opportunity we had to travel and we knew heading to all these places in January was definitely going to be a gamble with things being frozen up, ice, but it looked like we were going to get lucky for a while. The temperatures were in the 40s, but until about five days prior to our trip, the forecast just kept getting colder and colder and colder. And when we were driving there, the forecast changed again and it showed just a brutal week. I mean, the temperatures, we had one day, the first day we were gonna be there, it was gonna be just above freezing, but each day after that, I think the high, the actual feel of high temperature was what, 20 degrees? Mm -hmm. With the winds steady, 25 to 30 miles an hour. And two days prior to our trip, all the harbors and rivers completely froze up. I mean, we, tr we tried and tried and tried and drove, put the miles on on the boots and the car, tried to find some areas to fish, but everything was just so locked up. We couldn't find anywhere to fish, not a harbor, you know, not a river. All the rivers we planned on fishing were just locked up. So we were kind of like, well, what do we do? You know, I mean. Yeah, it, one night we decided we were like, okay, we have a good wind and things might just line up perfectly for us to try and fish this one spot we might actually be able to get out it was 32 degrees that night and we had the perfect wind where we thought some of that ice would break up at the launch so i mean we got so lucky guys the wind was coming at the absolute perfect direction right into the marina right into the harbor to break up that ice and we thought well you know the wind was coming from the south so there were some huge waves coming in breaking up that ice but then in the middle of the night, the wind was gonna to change to the west, which was gonna be blowing offshore in Wisconsin, which would, hopefully what we were thinking, would blow that broken up ice out before it had a chance to refreeze. We saw it was gonna get really cold again, but hopeful thinking, late night, <laughs> praying we could get out, that's what was running through our mind, but really we weren't accept setting our expectations no. too high at all. We pretty much just accepted the fact that, you know, we're just gonna hang out, go we'll try to find a few good places to eat, and make the best of the situation you know mm -hmm. and uh but anyways like mag said we got up that morning and everything worked out perfect it was amazing oh hi honey as you can see dipsy's really good about not jumping up we're still working on that she likes coho too if you didn't yeah. know <laughs> she's she's five months now so we're in the middle of training her she's doing really well we're shocked by how smart she is she's an Australian Shepherd Blue Healer mix, so we knew she was going to be a smart breed, but I've never had a dog this smart. Yeah, but, it's a little intimidating when she looks at you sometimes. I know, you're like, what are you thinking? But yeah, she was at daycare that day while we were out fishing. Yeah, she was, yep. We brought her to this daycare and it was really cute. At the end of the day, they sent us like a bunch of pictures of the friends that she made and they told us... Had an absolute blast. Yeah, they told us all these details about her day and stuff that they worked on with her so yeah that worked out well I mean she wouldn't it was way too cold for her to be out there so we definitely wouldn't have done that but yeah <laughs> so overall guys you know it was at least we got to get out one day you know we were hoping we could make a little bit more than that but we were really thankful we were able to get out one day mm -hmm. and catch a few fish and make this video so that was our main goal and part of the reason why we started doing these videos in the first place is just because we both love to travel mm -hmm. and we both just wanted to remember all the places we were going. Like last winter, we were going to all these cool fisheries and we just wanted to just have something to look back and remember about. So that's really the main reason for doing these videos and we love sharing what we do and the things we experience and you know, awesome recipes like yeah. this and we hope it uh, brings you guys some enjoyment for sure. Yeah. So. so if you guys do like our videos, make sure you subscribe. It really helps us out. 
Um, we definitely want to try and hit 10,000 subscribers by the time we get back from this vacation and all of this filming and stuff. So if you guys like this video, make sure you check out some of our other videos and subscribe to our channel and also hit the like button that helps us get our videos out there more. And yeah, we appreciate it. We really appreciate it, guys.